All right. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for signing in to this little webinar to kind of keep us posted on what's happening with the Christmas drive. Um, I don't even know how many years we have partnered with you all for the Christmas drive. I probably should know that, but <laughs> I am not quite sure. Um, as most of you know, this is just my second year running it. So um, I'm happy and feel so honored to be a part of it. I, I really love so far, at least virtually meeting a lot of your parents and talking to them about their awesome kids and trying to put lists together to try to help out as much as possible. So um, yeah, so hopefully throughout this little webinar we have going on here, we'll have a chance to get to know all of you a little bit better, uh, even through Zoom as we've all been doing for so long um, and kind of get a good idea of what's going on over at your school pre and post COVID, uh, it's good to know. So thanks for putting together this, this slideshow. Um, why don't you two just start and introduce yourselves and how long you've been there and we can kind of just take it from there. Great. Go ahead, Brooke. Sure, yeah, I can start. Hi everyone, my name's Brooke. Um, I am the new school counselor at Lot Whitcomb this year. It is my very first year, um, which is very exciting and very interesting. I'm learning alongside so many other people how we do uh, school online. So it's really nice to be here with you all today. Also my pronouns are she, her, and hers. Thank you, and I'm Annie Schlegel. I also use she, her, and her pronouns. Um, I have been here, this is my seventh year at Whitcomb. I used to run the after-school program, and then um, I'm now a school social worker and behavior interventionist here, which just looks like a lot of different hats. So um, I love this community. It's a great community to be a part of, and I feel really honored um, to be a part of it. And we wanna thank you also for your involvement in our community. We love having you as mentors, and we really appreciate Backpack Buddies and Solo Sal um has just been a great partner for us so thank you yeah. um, and then we'll talk a little bit about what makes us special um at here at Whitcomb and we put some pictures of our kids uh last year we did kind of an identity and we will talk about that in a little bit um and so they were create they were saying attributes that they identify with for themselves and so you can see um, we have a lot of diversity in our school which I think is one of the great things about Whitcomb and it's so nice to see their faces. So here's a little picture of them. Um, and so one of the things we talk a lot about is race and identity at Whitcomb, which I really appreciate. And I've gone um, to class with some of your teachers uh, around this. So one of the things that makes Whitcomb great is um, their cultural identities and their racial identities, and it's a wide variety of students. We have students from all over. Um, most of our, half of our students approximately identify as being um, Hispanic, Latino, Mexican, and then the other, maybe not quite half, identify as white, and then we have uh, about 10% of our students who identify as another race, so either mixed race or Asian or um, Pacific Islander, African American, African, so that is one of the beautiful things about Wickham. Um, Brooke, do you wanna talk a little bit about our bilingual program? Sure, yeah. So we do um, bilingual instruction for students in kindergarten, first grade, and second grade. And so students kind of go along and we'll build up the program. So hopefully next year we have a third grade bilingual program and follow the students who are involved currently. Um, and the bilingual program is in Spanish. It's so fun to, to join those classes and see students engaging um, in learning in Spanish. Uh, I am not bilingual yet, hopefully someday soon. Um, the kindergarten classes are, are really fun to be a part of because that's like about my level of Spanish, maybe a little bit lower. So um, so it's great. And it, and it really speaks to um, the kind of biculturalism that we're trying to celebrate here at Whitcomb as well. Um, so we do have students in our bilingual program whose um, native language is Spanish and then students um, in our bilingual program whose native language is English. Um, we also have other languages spoken here at Whitcomb including Tagalog, Mandarin, and Vietnamese. And of course we have English speakers at our school as well. Um, and I heard you maybe wanted to see a typical day at Whitcomb. So we have a couple of videos that just kind of highlight uh, what it looks like to be in an elementary school classroom right now. So I will see if I can get these to play. You know what, they're kind of small. So let me see if I can make them bigger. So this, uh, these, oh, actually we'll do first grade first. Um, this is first grade. Yeah. 
and this is a morning meeting. So all of our classes, um, one of the things that we want to focus on is community and building community in each of our classrooms. And so uh, each classroom starts with a greeting and they make sure everyone's name is said as a part of honoring who they are and then um, making sure everyone feels welcome. So this is a first grade class and I will be interested to, to for some high school perspective on how maybe this differs a little bit from your entry into class. <laughs> We're going to do our class greeting. Okay. We students may unmute. Anthony, Bella, Eva, Gianni, Mike, and Sadie. You may unmute. Oh, I forgot. Annette is here. Anthony is here. Hi, hello. Yes, and Anthony are here. Iron is here. Mike is here. Hello. Iron and Mike are here. Eva is here. Bella is here. So that was a little clip from first grade and then we'll show you a little second grade clip too. Um, this one is uh, in Spanish as part of honoring our bilingual program. We also were very fortunate at Law to have a lot of staff who identify as uh, people of color um, or BIPOC folks. And so that has really brought up a rich um, diversity into our school that we feel really lucky to be a part of. Um, and that's different from a lot of the other schools in our district. See, best. So you're going to watch Maestro Womack if I can get it up. Tu nombre en amarillo. Vas a decir buenos días, clase, esta vez. Okay. Bueno. La última semana dijo buenos días al próximo estudiante y al estudiante antes, ¿verdad? Si tenías uno antes. Esta semana vamos a decir buenos días clase y van a poder hacer un gesto, ¿ok? Por ejemplo, tiene que ser con sus manos o con su cara chistosa, ¿verdad? O pueden ser que hagan así con su pelo, ¿verdad? Un gesto que nosotros podamos ver y hacer también. Por ejemplo, si yo soy Emi, voy a decir buenos días clase y todos tienen que decir buenos días Emi, ¿ok? O si yo soy Marco, voy a decir, buenos días, clase. Y todos van a decir, buenos días, Marco. Ok, vamos a copiar al gesto que hace cada estudiante. Ok, y puede ser chistoso o puede ser así nada más, pero quiero que participen, ok. Traten de participar lo más posible. ¿Están listos? Sí, ok. Emi, vas a empezar y vas a decir buenos días, clase, y hacer un gesto chistoso o bonito, o lo que quieras. Estén pensando en un gesto. Buenos días, clase. Entonces vamos a decir buenos días, Emi. <ríe> Gracias, Emi. Y así. Buenos días, clase. Buenos días, Jessie. That may be a little different than uh, your high school classes. I think we should start it. <laughs> the singing one. I agree. Um, Brooke, do you want to talk a little bit about uh, this one? I didn't Sure. Know. Yeah. So um, in addition to building community by welcoming students, saying their name, giving them an opportunity to greet each other in the morning, um, we also have been doing a lot of work around identity, um, racial and cultural identity. Uh, and those are lessons that are happening during our morning meeting time with students. And so the idea with these lessons is that we are encouraging students to kind of think about who they are um, and know the different parts of who they are. And so we're practicing language around identity. We have sentence frames for students like I identify as, and then kids are able to fill in how they identify. And so using that language and building that strength um, is something that's really, really important to us here at Whitcomb because again, um, we have such a, a wonderful, rich community here, and we want students to have the language to celebrate who they are. Um, and one of the things that we've been hearing from folks uh, is about how important that is to their students. And so one of our um, 
we have a group called Madres de Corazón and it's a mom's group that uh, meets with us every week. And one of the moms said her older daughter who was in high school was watching uh, her first grader go through one of these lessons and the older daughter said, where was this when I was in elementary school? Just how important it was for them to hear that racial identity piece um, and celebrating that. And then one of the other moms said, when you know yourself, you can better give yourself to other people. So we're just really feeling grateful that we have the space in our community to be able to talk about these things. Um, and then we also wanted to just highlight kind of some of the challenges that our students face. We are a Title I elementary school. 100% of our students are able to access free and reduced lunch. And so they uh, face a lot of challenges, oppressions, and some barriers. And so some of that looks like housing insecurity, poverty, um, challenges with immigration or documentation, um, racism, and food insecurity. And we are so grateful that you um, are able to help with some of those things as well. Um, and so that's where our presentation ends. It's just saying thank you for your support. Oops. Uh, oh, go back, go back. No, the other way. <laughs> uh oh. There it is. Okay. Um, and this year alone, we've been able to distribute more than 1500 pounds of food. So just thank you so much for that contribution. We were calculating it the other day and just thinking about all the beans and rice you brought the other day was like more than 500 Incredible. pounds of food. And it was amazing. Mm -hmm. um, and for seniors, I don't know what the audience is right now, but um, during the time, your time at LaSalle, I was thinking about like, how many kids have you impacted and how many families? And so just in three years, because we didn't mentor this year, it's more than 240 students and 4,500 backpack buddies and Christmas for more than 150 families. So I just thank you, LaSalle, for being a part of our community very much. So we are open for questions and I'm gonna stop sharing. Yeah, awesome. Is there anything else that you wanted us to share on before we take questions? I think that's amazing. It's so nice to see the photos and kind of what you're doing over there and the celebrations of culture, I think is amazing. Um, I hope some of our students recognize a name or two because by this time everybody has an assignment to bring in a gift for someone. So I know there were a couple in there that I recognized. Um, let's see. Okay. We have a question about aspects of lot. Wait, it was just. Uh, Mackenzie, do you have anything specific you want to know about that we didn't answer? I can unmute you, Mackenzie, if you want me to. And one of our teachers did, I'm looking at the, one of our teachers just got elected to Milwaukee City Council. So that's really great too. Very cool. Yeah. Um, could I show this slide with challenges students face? Yes, I can show that one again too. And this is just one small, right? Like there's lots more challenges that students face um, with regards to trauma, um, you know, and roles that, that students have after school, you know, some of them are having, and I'm sure some of you are also like taking care of younger siblings or um, doing other roles in the household, cooking, things like that. It's a good question. Do you see it? What's what brings uh, staff joy while working at Love? Mm, I love that question. Go ahead, Brooke. That is such a great question. I'm also seeing the questions like roll in a little bit slower. So I apologize for my delayed reactions. But um, the, the joy right now really is for me seeing students popping into their morning meetings, experiencing their joy and enthusiasm and excitement of being in community really fills my bucket, which is a way that we talk about, um, you know, feeling good and, and excited about being at school. What about you, Annie? Um, the same, like going into classrooms and being able to see students and having relationships with them. Um, and I would say that's true for a lot of staff, right? Like they are teachers because they love kids at elementary school. Teachers love, love, love kids. Um, and that's where they get their joy is being in relationship with students. Um, I see LaSalle students wonder, might wonder why a lot what can students have or need a gift drive? That is a great question. Um, I think 
that there's a lot of reasons. Um, I think for a lot of our families, they are working um, and working minimum wage jobs. And so that doesn't always leave a lot of extra room um, for the extras like gifts um, at the holidays in particular. I think especially with coronavirus, a lot of our families have um, lost work and aren't eligible to receive some of the benefits like unemployment. Um, and that might be due to immigration status or that might be due to a variety of other things. And so uh, it's impacted their ability to have income right now. Um, and so that is part of why the gift drive is important um, and that their students can have uh, an experience where they get to have something that other families get to have and don't have to worry about. Do you have anything to add to that, Brooke? Yeah, I think really similar to what you were mentioning, Annie, just that our families sometimes have a hard time getting their basic needs met. So things, extra things like gifts, it's hard to make those a priority, even though it's a celebratory season for a lot of our families. Um, so trying to balance what they're able to provide and how they're able to celebrate is really enriched by the work that y'all are doing at LaSalle to support our families. It's the, the sigh of relief. I'm sure Sarah can even speak to this a little bit in her communication with our families. Um, the just the gratitude and the relief they feel knowing that there's people in our community that can help um, is, is so valuable. So we really appreciate all of your help in that. I talked to a mom today um, from your school and just told her that, you know, we had been signing up for specific things and they were very simple things, you know, books, um, socks, you know, things that she had asked for. But um, I try to keep everything just as a way of that, you know, we're in a position right now to help. And so that's, that's what we're kind of called to do. And, you know, we're grateful to be able to do that. And so it's, it's important to be generous. And, you know, I, I think it's so important for us that we're praying for each family by name in class too, um, just so that we kind of have a human relationship um, of a, a humble way to provide this kind of service at this time. Um, so it's, it's pretty special to build these relationships. So I encourage everyone to get to know your family's name uh, at the very least and pray for them um, and you know pick out their present with, with kindness and love knowing where it's going. Um, that's, that's the most that I can ask for in this. Um, there's a couple questions here about the pandemic. So maybe talking about the challenges that have come because of COVID-19. Yeah, I think a lot of our families are still trying to work. So a lot of them work in industries um, where they still are going to work, aren't essential workers, but things like the restaurant industry, construction. Um. We have a lot of families who work in like nursing homes and healthcare mm -hmm. support. Mm -hmm. So they are still, so there's kind of two parts of that. Like one, the families that have to go to work and continue to be exposed. And so we have had families who have gotten COVID recently and that's going up in our community like it is across the state, but we're seeing them test positive. And so then that has impacts around um, wage and earnings. And so if families have to quarantine for two weeks, but their work is only giving them a week of, a, of pay, I mean, that's impactful uh, as far as their ability to pay rent and make rent. Um, a lot of our families are behind on rent, behind on their bills um, because of that similar situation where they're not necessarily eligible for unemployment or that unemployment is lower now, they're not receiving the extra federal funds. Um, and then also like the fear of having to go to work and be exposed and then bring that home to your family. Uh, a lot of our families are also multi-generational and so there are grandparents in the homes or other folks that they're taking care of. And so then it's more impactful than to just their immediate um, family. I was looking up too, just cause I don't know uh, federal poverty guidelines. So a family of four, the federal poverty guidelines. So that's over 90% of our students qualify uh, for that. And that's $26,000 a year for a family of four. So when you think about the rental prices around here, like half of that money is automatically going to rent, not to mention other things like bills, insurance, car payments, all of that. So um, yeah, the pandemic has, has definitely impacted our families uh, in big ways. Mm -hmm. um, I want to come back to Mr. Horch's question, but going off of that conversation when you transitioned into online, I am always amazed at children doing this online learning. Like it's one thing to be a high school kid and 
like have these challenges that we've been seeing since March, but for these little kids to like log on, and see, like, it just amazes me. So maybe we can talk a little bit about how that transition happened. Yeah. Um, I'm always amazed by our kindergartners. This is their first encounter and experience with school oftentimes, and they are so exuberant and joyful and excited to be at school. Um, and the transition, it's families, right? Like teachers are doing a ton of work to set routines and boundaries and expectations with kids about how to use their technology, but it's families who are working so, so hard juggling everything that's happening at home. A lot of our families are working and getting their kids logged in every day for school is, is incredible. Annie, do you want to speak a little bit more to, to that transition? Yeah. Uh, in the spring and fall, we were able to give out computers to each family the school district was. And so I think that has been helpful as far as the barrier around technology, but we also have some families who aren't comfortable with technology. They haven't had to use it. They don't use it for their jobs. And so learning how to use a computer has been um, something that families, some families have had to do too. Uh, and again, like Brooke said, I, our families are amazing. They are so resilient and they're like desire to have their kids on the computer and learning is incredible. And yeah, the kinder, our kids are just amazing. They're amazing and technically savvy and yeah, they've done a really great job. And we have students who still don't access. So I think there's like this dual, especially in our jobs, like we try and help the kids who haven't been able to get on and access. And then we have families who are able and are working so hard to do that. So kind of across the board. Um, we, everybody watched in their religious studies classes, that video that shows your reopening. Yeah. Um, so yeah, how has that, Mr. Horch asked, um, how has the new renovated in school impacted the experience of students? So pre-COVID. The building is beautiful. <laughs> um, it is so much brighter, so much cleaner, the kids, um, it really like sets the tone for school. It's not this dark, dreary place that it used to be. And I think the kids uh, feel that it's like a more welcoming, warm place to be. Um, so it's been a super positive, like teachers are happier, kids are happier. It's great. It's amazing how space um, can like shift our mindsets in so many ways. So Mr. Darmody and Mr. Mack are asking a similar question. Um, I'll read Mr. Max. So I'd love for our students to hear ways that the kids and parents at Lot Wickham are contributing to their school and our broader community. Uh, sadly, there's often a sense that we are the have swooping in to save the have nots. It's critical that we help people see that we are all contributing together. Yes. Do you want to start question? Yeah. Sure, yeah, I think that's such a valuable question and a really important perspective to, to bring to this conversation. Um, and a few different things kind of pop up for me when we think about the ways that our families and students are contributing to our community. Annie's already touched on this. A lot of folks that are in our community here at Whitcomb do work and they're in essential worker jobs, right? Like, so they're contributing to the community by helping us be able to go to the grocery store or get care for our family who lives in a nursing home or, um, you know, continuing to build housing so people have a place to go. So there's that kind of element of people from Whitcomb supporting our community. And then there's also the kind of thing that happens here at school. Like our students are kindergarten through fifth grade, so they're very young. Um, but for me, I noticed that they're the ones who are really providing that laughter and joy and creativity and enthusiasm, that comfort and care to me as an adult, to other adults in our school building, but they're also providing that communally to each other. Um, I know the pandemic has brought up lots of feelings of loneliness and isolation for many of us since we're doing school online, we're not able to hug our friends, we're, um, you know, some of us aren't seeing our families besides on a Zoom screen. So being able to have that infusion of of connection and care. Kids are providing that to us and to each other. Yeah, and um, what you said, Mr. Mack, I have that li a Lila Watson quote I don't know, up on my wall and it says, if you've come here to help me, you're wasting your time, but if you um, are here because your liberation is bound with mine, let us work together. And I think that speaks to that 
element, right, of like what Brooke talked about is that we have a lot of folks who are still in our community who are allowing us to go about our daily lives. Um, and then another thing I wanted to touch on was that our group of moms that is here, our Madres group, um, and I think you have a student whose mom is a part of it. I'm not sure if she's here today, uh, but they are a huge advocacy group in our community too. And so um, they have gone to Salem and the legislation, the legislators really value them as parents. And so they've gone and asked for more school funding and they were really key in going to talk to legislators about public school funding and getting bills passed so that we could fund our schools better. Um, they also were really key in advocating for driver's licenses. And so uh, driver's licenses for immigrants who are not documented. Um, so I think there's, it's work that is integral in our community, but you can't always see it. It's not the tangible gift, you know, or the tangible food, but it's like, how do we make community a better, safer place for everybody? Um, and that's hard to quantify and it's hard to point your finger at. Um, but like Brooke said, is like, how do you build relationships and, and build communities? I think what also you're doing is by raising young individuals who have this strong sense of identity is something that will be able to teach us all. Those of us who like your older high school sister or brother who said like, where was this when I was in elementary school? Like there is so much that we'll be able to then learn from these amazing young people who are receiving this education about, you know, justice and identity and culture and, you know, pride um, that we, I can speak for myself, just just wasn't received in that kind of language when I was little. So that's something else that is a huge contributor to, I think, society. Um, yeah, so, and it's another reason why I, I keep saying that we're partnering with Latwickham. Um, you know, we're just, if we can be big brothers and sisters for a while um, and just help when we can, because we can, um, and just, just being a partner you know, just, just being a neighbor. Uh, and it's really nothing more than that. So um, does anybody have a specific question about maybe the family that you're helping or a kid that you're helping or anything like that that we're working with? Or any last minute questions? We also are thinking every year we have a, it's called Cultural Connections and we have a day where our community comes to share about their own culture. And so that's a really yes. neat way to the community comes. Um, when I saw you say like contributing to the community, I think that's another way that we share parts of ourselves and help build that. And it would be great to have LaSalle be a part of that when we are back yeah. in real that life. That'd be wonderful. <laughs> yeah, that'd be great. I think we need to do a lot more together. Yeah, Brooks that calls it, what do you call it? The after times and the before times? Oh yeah, <laughs> the before times. Times. I don't know what we'll call it post COVID. <laughs> Definitely something. <laughs> I think, I think there has to be something. All right. Well, I can't thank you two enough for taking this time to teach us a little bit more uh, about your school. I know many of us have been blessed enough to even like be in your halls and, you know, meet your teachers and meet your kids. Um, but a lot of us aren't, aren't that sure about it. So this is just giving us a wonderful picture about what we're doing and why we're doing it and just how to how to do as much as we possibly can just to partner at this time. So, um, oh wait, Maria has a question. David, she's helping a student named David, I believe Rodriguez. Do you know David. Rodriguez? Mm -hmm. Sweet, sweet child. <laughs> David, is David a third grader? I think so. I think so, yes, he's very, very sweet. <laughs> Anything more you want to question? I can't see that for some reason. It just I says, can you tell me more about David? Um, like he's just like the sweetest. I don't really know what to tell you. <laughs> I don't, part of me is like, I don't know how much I can tell you with confidentiality. Right. Um, David is very, very sweet. He's just like a lover. He he's a great friend. Um, yeah, he uh is. His, so he corrected us and he is actually David, David, David. So um, he's strong in his identity too. I think that's another great thing about him. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Well, if anybody has any questions more, you can shoot them through me via Schoology and I can share them with Ms. Annie and Ms. Brooke. Um, anybody has questions at all about the Christmas drive, any like details that you're still questionable about, 
um, always let me know. I can look up anything and everything for you um, as quickly as possible. So can I ask a question? Is yeah, Abigail of course. Ramirez, is, do you have a sibling here? Abigail Ramirez, allowed to talk. Abigail. Hello? Is, yeah, that, is Miss that Abby? Annie. Abigail? Yeah, hi, Miss Annie. Oh, hi. <laughs> I didn't know you were at La Salle. That makes me so happy. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> it's so yeah, I've actually I've got my mom and my sister watching the presentation too. Oh, hi Roxana. Hi Erica. Hi. Hola. <laughs> Hola, ¿cómo está? Oh my yeah. god. Bien, qué bueno. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that makes me happy. Well, I think you showed us perfectly what an amazing community you have. So I appreciate that very much. So we do. And Erika is one of our madres who is oh, wonderful. a super advocate. So you've got great people. Awesome. Yes. Very much so. <laughs> very Thank much you. Thank so. you. I think together, yeah, we're, um, I am so, so grateful, you know, to, to be part of madres and to know people like Miss Annie, that is, um, you know, they're great people who help people. And thanks to La Salle, I'm, I'm so grateful as well because Abby's there and she's, she's a senior and well, there's no words to describe, the, you know, the feeling that, and it's, estoy muy agradecida con todos. Estamos lo, estamos lo mismo, porque su familia está muy, muy bonita. Yeah, so she's just saying like she's very thankful for all of us. Gracias, Erika y Abigail and Roxana. Thank you. Thank you for saying that. Bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, thank you all so much. This will be recorded and I'll put it up for the students who weren't able to watch it or view it um, just so we have a better idea of everything. But thank you, thank you to everybody. Thank you for being here. And then Ms. Annie and Ms. Brooke will continue to be in touch. I know I send you about 50 emails a day, so we'll just keep it going. So thank you. Great, thank you so much. Thanks, all right, bye-bye. Bye, bye. bye LaSalle.